Hey everyone, it's Alex Conrose here from Virtualize Me. Uh, just a continuation on the quick video series about the different elements on custom forms. Now, previous I did Belly Picker. Uh, today I'm going to have a look at uh, Data Grid. Now, there's a few little flaws with Data Grid at the moment. Um, I believe that the only reason it's available is because that is what it uses for adding additional disks and uh, network. So if you look at these here, you can add disks over here, and it's a data grid, but it's very specific to being able to add additional disks. Now, I believe that's the only reason the element is there, because it's not that usable outside of adding disks or adding net network cards. So what you can do is drag on a data grid, and we can see the usuals, um, how many rows, uh, read-only visibility, that's great. Uh, we can add additional columns here, as we can see here, this might be applications to install, uh, which is good, and we can have an external source. Now, at the moment, though, it won't pick up <coughs> actions which have uh, properties uh, as the output, which is what it requires. So you can actually have a little workaround as you set the action to output of array of any, assign it, then change it back to properties and it actually works. So as we can see here, I've got, I'm returning custom value there. So if I go and have a look at my data grid, I'm just returning an array matching the exact same fields, uh, array of properties, as you can see. Now, if I was to load that up and over here, let's request that. It should populate all that data that I put in there. There it all is. That's great. Now you can select this, you can like use it and interact with it, but the issue is getting that data at the end of it. So I could submit that. Uh, I won't build a large. I can submit that, it goes off fine, but then how do I get access to that data? So currently there sort of really isn't a way, um, which is why I mean that, you know, it's uh, it's there because of those disks and networks. It's not really there to be used for anything else at the moment. Now there is already um, uh, this issue has already been raised and it is you know being addressed, which is great. Uh, but if we have actually have a look, say if we have a look at uh, a deployment, here's a custom forms deployment I did earlier, and we can see that it it passes through the data grid provider. But we can see everything's null, right? It's great. Um, as part of the machine payload, it's not there at all. Uh, and as part of the properties, if we go to our items, have a look at a, a deployment here, we can select this and have a look at product properties. It's there, but again, all the data in it's null, uh, which is you know a shame. Now we can even go one step further, actually have a look at the request payload. Uh, of the machine that we set. Uh, if I have a look up here, we can see there's the data grid ID, uh, everything in there is not there. So, you know, at the moment, that field isn't usable. Now, how could you use this field? Like I showed uh, here previously, was that maybe you could have uh, applications with a cost and what people select on there depends what gets installed or workflows that are triggered as part of the machine install. You know that would work pretty well uh, and would have a cost and other things associated with it but anyway that's it for d data grid you know it's not uh, very helpful this video but at least let you know that you know if you are looking at how to use it currently you might want to look at something else all right cheers bye